The human race is incredibly resilient. We have the technologies we need to begin to address the challenges we face. It's relatively low cost. And business can play a leading role in addressing the challenge of climate change. We need massive innovation. We need to transform agriculture, construction, the power industry, the transportation sector. Who's going to do that? Business can do it. Only business has the resources and the skills to innovate and deploy the technologies we need at scale. And here's the good news. A lot of this can be done on a profitable basis, even in today's regime, even without further government policy. We can see massive investments in clean energy happening all over the world, including most recently in India. Clean energy is increasingly cheaper than coal, even without a carbon price. I am personally working with many, many firms that see massive opportunity in the green transition. So what can business do? Everything. Change the world. I love it. That's so inspirational. <laughs> the caveat is without appropriate government policy, mm. under current prices and incentives, business can only get us maybe a third yeah. to a half of the way there. But we know what these policies look like. Mm. We know how to roll them out. What we lack is the political will. And one more really important thing that business can do. The only way to solve the massive problems we face in the end is a huge political and social movement. Business can play an incredibly important role in creating the consumers and citizens and employees who understand where we need to go and building the political will that will let us put in place the kind of pricing for fossil fuels, the kinds of regulatory shifts we need, Completely transforming infrastructure and transportation is going to require a whole bunch of, of, of new regulation. And um, the investments in research and development and innovation and in entrepreneurship that we need to really make sure we keep having the new in inventions that we're going to need to really transform the whole world's economy. Another question you mentioned in your book as well, quite a lot about short termism. How are we going to get companies to overcome the influence of just looking at delivering short-term results? Key to addressing short-termism is to remember that there is one purpose of business. And that purpose is to create a thriving society on a living planet. My experience has been that when you are authentic about that, when you really mean it, when you start to act in that way, you generate enormous commitment, alignment and excitement amongst your employees, your suppliers and your customers. And that's an incredible way to focus on the long term. Mario and, and Jan, I'd love to get your views on this. So how hard is it to juggle both being able to deliver the bottom line and also deliver on sustainability? I think it takes a different culture to do it. And uh, who's going to who's going to do the, the right things in this planet if we don't start doing ourselves? the right things. Um, and so if you start looking with this kind of glasses to, to the issues, then it's not hard because everybody understands that uh, we're living at times of unprecedented changes. And uh, if we don't do uh, what, whatever we can do, uh, we're not going to solve it and feel that responsibility that you have to do more than just, just making the profits. And Jan, I'm sure you, you share similar views. You've got a big carbon footprint, but you also want to be part of the solution. Um, how do you go about doing that? Well, I think decarbonizing is on, on top of our strategy. And uh, the future of Holcim is uh, decarbonizing our process, decarbonizing our building materials, and decarbonizing the way the world builds and the, world, uh, uh, the way the world lives. And so we work with... Uh, the customers of Holcim or with the beneficiary of Holcim technology. Uh, what we see directly is the damages that the climate is, uh, is doing to these people. And we touch these damages almost every day in our life. Um, so that makes us uh, not just aware, but also part of the solution. And part of the solution is also when we fix things, we try to fix things in a more sustainable way than what was done before. And so we try to encourage uh, our customers to 
repair or to replace uh, with uh, better solutions than the ones that existed before. That's a big part. So we have already products which are using up to 50% of recycling of construction demolition waste. Wow. So we literally take the old concrete bricks back and we put them back into our products. Okay. It's one of the few materials where you have no downcycling, you can reuse it 100% and, uh, and we're very advanced here. Um, at Harvard, we have more than, I think it's a couple of hundred cases on specific examples of firms, many of them small and entrepreneurial, building fabulous new businesses in service of doing things a different way. Do you ever worry that there is any reputational risk or political risk um, when you're attempting to stick to these sustainable core values? No, I don't think so. I think, first of all, there will be no future for any company without sustainability. You see that also in our company, we have 70,000 employees and they are like activists for sustainability. <laughs> so when we have town hall meetings, in the past we talked about performance, numbers, acquisitions, innovation. Today, we talk 80% about sustainable wow. and how we can be part of the solution. I do value that uh, there is a reputation at risk and um, this world is complicated and I think it, it matters doing the right things. So we, we keep doing the things that we believe are right, we stand for uh, our principle, we stand for the things that uh, we believe are right and if somebody doesn't like it, we try to explain. I would say you have to challenge yourself. Don't be satisfied. That's very key. Think a bit more radical. You have to go to the young people. I put the young people into those projects because they have fresh minds. Yeah, this is real. The young people will have to vote one day and they will not vote for you if you don't act today and uh, feel the obligation to do something today. Brilliant, brilliant. So uh, on that note, huge round of applause, everyone, for Rebecca, Mario and Jan. Thank you. To watch the full Leading with Purpose panel discussion, follow the link below.